guys, welcome to the Dream State. We're here with Wordsmith today. This guy is an incredible street artist. You've seen his work around the city. You've probably become art yourself with his work. We're gonna learn how to really get recognized and get your art out there in the world. Wordsmith, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great Amazing. to be here. Can you talk about a little bit about your progression as an artist, like where, when you got started and what's happening now? Yeah. I've always been a writer and like a I love, writer, right? well, all different forms. Like I like wow. writing in a lot of different mediums. Out of school, I worked in advertising. They were promoting me and paying me a lot, but I came to a realization one day that I just wasn't doing the, the kind of work I wanted to be doing, the creative work. Um, so on that cliche, I quit my job and told my friends and family I was moving to Hollywood. Um, <laughs> From and where? I did that. From Chicago. I was living oh, okay. in Chicago. Nice. Yeah. You're a and creature of the cold. Uh, yeah, but not anymore. Like I've been here long enough that LA's home and, and I get cold when it's 60 degrees out. So <laughs> exactly. when I got here, I was writing screenplays and short films. I worked in documentary TV to pay the bills and I love to write so much. I was spending six to eight to 10 hours a day doing what I love, sure. but it, it, it was, it was taxing. And I had this day, this realization that I needed an active hobby. I needed something that got me out of the chair for stretches amount of time. And I was like, maybe I'll do street art. Beautiful. The part of that story is I, I didn't think I could do it. Like I thought superheroes did it. Um, mm. Those pieces appear, you know, on walls overnight, on rooftops. And I was always in awe of it. I mean, even when I was a little kid, um, I used to see stuff scrawled on walls like Tony Hawk is God. And I was fascinated <laughs> by it. Like it was always, who did that? Why did they do that? When did they do that? You weren't into skateboarding, were you? I never did hardcore, but, but I liked that whole scene. I, I liked punk music and uh, just alternative music. And, and I, and yeah, I was, I just wasn't a great skateboarder, but, um, but, but yeah, so when I got to Hollywood or when I got to Los Angeles, I saw the image of my typewriter. I just wanted to mark my territory, like pee all over the idea. So I forgot, <laughs> I forgot about my fear completely and just dove in. Like when I get excited about an idea, I just want to make it a reality. Street artists will tell you, you put up that first piece and there's such an adrenaline rush. It's just, it's just insane. So you, you hear a helicopter and you're like, shit, they're coming for me. It's, it's just ridiculous. But it's this also this adrenaline rush. So oh. on one of your posts, you said, I now show my face. Were you being like- Yeah, I think every street artist that starts yeah. hides their identity, identity because of the legality. Right. I stopped caring about um, the anonymity pretty early on because mm -hmm. I really believe in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I still didn't put my face out there because the mystery worked in my favor. You know what mm. I mean? People, people liked you know, the mystery of who's doing this, yeah. when are they doing it, why are they doing it? And it is kind of like a superhero um, like, 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 like <laughs> world kind of thing. I used to I call going out and doing pieces, this is more when I did it at 4 o'clock in the morning, fighting crime. Mm. Like I would say to my friends, oh yeah, I fought crime this morning, and they just <laughs> knew because it, cool. it was, yeah, it was just code. And I have had you know, cops roll up on mm. me. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to do anything stupid. I'm just going to talk to them. I'm going to say I'm trying to beautify. I'm not I'm, yeah. I'm destroy. I'm trying to put positive messages out there. Right. If they need to do their job, I'm fine with that. If they need to find me or arrest me, yeah. I'm actually fine with that. How many times have you been arrested? In I've been I've been very lucky. I've Good had job. cops roll up on me the first time it ever happened. They rolled up on me and I'm like, oh, this is it. And I was so nervous. And two minutes into the conversation, one of the police officers said, hey, don't be nervous. We actually like what you're doing. Aww, and that was that massive. It was massive for me. Wow. Like it was just, it was, wow, they even noticed what I'm doing versus mm -hmm. he has a spray can in his hand. You right. know, it's, it's the end of story. Like your pieces are beautiful on their own. And then we see people putting themselves in front of like a couple, in front of the mm -hmm. kissing, you know, to to illustrate that or the goddess with the beautiful wings, you know, you're, tell me yes. about that. I had a comment and a hashtag, sometimes the art happens long after I put up a piece in the streets Your because of so these, cool. yeah, these gestures. People are proposing in front of it. People are Aww. kissing their loved one yeah. and, and just, it's they're so putting romantic. their dogs. It's just, it's incredible to watch. It's and then so it makes gorgeous. my job easy because those photographs pop up on, on you know social media and I can repost them so it's yeah. just it livens up my feed because you know people are people are doing things with with like taking the the photo of the piece that I never even thought of well, oh I God. personally think the smartest art is one that you can interact with and it makes it communicates to you and then you communicate back to it yeah. so that's what you're doing so absolutely mm -hmm. so at first 
I just wanted to say things to people in Los Angeles that I wish they would have said to me when I first got here. I felt the city needed some like inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I started doing. Very quickly I realized that it's not just about Los Angeles, it's yeah. it's people all over the world want that. Great. That's cool. Like um Bai and I study Taekwondo together. Yeah. And um, you know, they say in Taekwondo words become reality. You know? That's why yeah. I'm wearing this top gun shirt, by the way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, like your words, they change the landscape. They, they change yeah. the way people think. I love I love that, that that's how it's perceived. You know, one of the things that Bai and I as filmmakers and writers, you write these scripts and it can take years to get these things made. Is that frustrating or challenging? And then it like with is. street art, you can just go and do it. You don't need a bunch of people to support you. Absolutely. It is so frustrating. Like that world is, is just a roller coaster ride. And Steven Soderbergh said this, and I think it's fascinating. Talent plus perseverance equals luck. And that's what that is. You know what I mean? It's like mm. you can be so talented. You could be doing it for years, but there is an element of luck. You know what I mean? In, in finding that person that mm. believes in your work as much as you do. What was it that gave you a big break? Was it one of your pieces or was um, it a person or? I'd say Instagram to answer that okay. question. Like, yeah. like, so people were finding that wordsmith, especially because it was unique, you know, no vowels and and they just, they, they found me on Instagram or, or hashtag start of appearing and then there was that, that snowball effect. Okay. So everything was very organic. There were little spikes, you know what I mean? I, I have celebrities that follow me and and I remember moments where somebody posted, you know, uh, a piece and, you know, the, the phone, the, the Instagram turns into like a slot machine. Oh my gosh, I just got, <laughs> you know, a thousand followers, you know, yeah. in, in a couple hours. So crazy stuff like that happened, but even that is organic over time and there's little spikes. Yay, and then the final question is, what is uh, the five tips that you can give to aspiring artists? Uh, always dream bigger. Yes. Um, do it for yourself mm -hmm. and hope what you do resonates with others. Um, Persevere. Um, just continue to, to continue to work. Don't be afraid to fail. Like mm. beautiful things come from mistakes or failures, and and that's part of the process. Yeah. Enjoy happy hour. Uh, I love <laughs> like it. you have to. You, there I has to be fun. an end of your day. You know what I mean? At yeah. some point, and whatever happy hour is for you, you have to kind of release. And and great things come from that. Is what I'm saying. I am completely blown away, inspired. I'm ready to create. Me too. And I feel like we actually have an, a real life angel in the yeah. house. I and mean, I did my job. You did. I mean, you inspired us. Thank you for Thank doing you. what you do. This, this was, was fun. This was a good talk. Oh, uh, good. Super good. Oh, I'm glad. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching this very special episode with Wordsmith on the Dream State. Make sure and follow him, Wordsmith, W-R-D. S-M-T-H. That's no right. And make sure to comment, subscribe, and like so you can get more inspiration. We love you guys. Mm -hmm.